Hey, Rick, thanks for that uh, break. Um, we're back. And um, I know I just want to say that, you know, there's so many things we try and cover things in these videos. And there's so much more information, like we literally just cram in pointers. And I just want uh, our viewers to be aware that we put our contact information across every screen and um, reach out to us. Uh, we'd be happy to have further conversations, Zoom meets, clarifications, send more information. Um, it's just that we try and touch topics so that people can at least trigger things in their mind. Oh, I didn't even think to ask about this or, oh, I didn't even think to consider that. We're just trying to help people and the videos are a great way to do that. So Rick, uh, without further ado for me, my friend, um, we were talking about the um, the um, rural areas and things for people to consider when moving to rural areas. I want you to talk about that from a, uh, a mortgage uh, in, in mortgage perspective. Okay, certainly. Uh, well, it is. It can certainly be much more complicated to get a mortgage uh, right. if you're dealing with a rural property. Yeah. Um, now, the first thing to look at is, is it a high ratio mortgage, i.e. is it insured uh, by CMHC or Sajin or Canada Guarantee or something like that? Because right. uh, the lenders are much more likely to do it if it's insured, because in the event that uh, you don't pay your mortgage and they have to do a power of sale, then uh, you know they've right. got that guarantee there because it can be hard to sell a, a rural property. It, it can take longer, uh, you know, uh, some lenders are really only interested in lending in major centers. Uh, so first thing that you have to be aware of, uh, especially if it's not an insured deal, is you're dealing with a smaller pool of lenders. So you might not have as much many options when you're uh, when you're getting a mortgage and you right. know rates might not be as competitive, things like that. Yeah. Um, the second thing uh, that you need to be aware of is if it is a agricultural property, uh, mm -hmm. then you're dealing with uh, a federally government, I, I believe it's a federal government program uh, that, uh, you know, will basically guarantee the loan. Um, it, it's most, uh, most lenders that do houses will not touch a property that's got any actual agricultural use. So you're often limited to like an acreage or something like that. Uh, like they might allow you to have like a couple of horses or something, but if you're going to be raising crops, then you're, you're zoned to or you're zoned agricultural, then yeah, you're, uh, you're dealing with a different program and you probably have to go to one of the major banks that have a connection with that uh, government of Canada program. And, uh, it's, it's a whole different ballpark. You're it's right. So whether it's zoned resident, residential, rural residential or agriculture, that mm -hmm. is correct. Yes. Yeah. Uh, the other thing, of course, you have to be uh, aware of is, you know, or if you're, you know, next to a farm is, you know, is the environmental contamination, is that an issue? Mm. Um, and uh, especially with well water, um, you know, yes. the, the well water has to be uh, tested and uh, it has to be, uh, you, you have to be able to drink the well water. Uh, if you're on a lake, for example, a lot of lenders will not do a mortgage if you just have the water intake from the lake. Um, right. So uh, the well, septic system systems. has to be up to date. Um, yeah. is, if you're looking at a cottage, uh, is there year round access? Uh, can mm -hmm. you just drive in? Do you have to take a boat? Um, th these are all issues where, you know, a lot of lenders will say, thank you very much, but no, thank you. Yeah. Um, so uh is is it a four season property right like do you have insulation for the winter um you must have fire insurance or you mm -hmm. can't get the uh you can't get a mortgage so